So, in 1999, I had a great opportunity to go live in Italy for a year. And it was great. I was uh, head of art uh, and the head of faculty at a, uh, a small school in Florence, Italy. And I had spent a little time in Italy before. I'd done some traveling, certainly, before that. And I have to say, one of the uh, common ambitions of a photographer is to go someplace and you immediately get immersed in a culture and you tend to react very quickly and get out a camera and shoot as much as you can. You play the tourist, unfortunately. And uh, what I learned in the past was that, um, in fact, most of those images were never pictures that I would keep or want to keep. They were never really things that were coming from um, a deep part of my vision. And I decided when I went to Italy in 99 that I would deliberately not start a photo project, that I was going to take several months to really figure out what it was that attracted me, if there was something that attracted me to this environment or that compelled me to make photographs and then what type of photographs and what it would be. It, obviously, there's a lot of approaches. So I came in late August, I think, to Italy uh, with my wife and... Um, in early November, my wife and I decided to take a, a trip for a week to Sicily. And when we went to Sicily, I began to see something that I resonated with, that, that resonated with me. Um, I started to see landscapes that were filled with unfinished building projects. That was the first thing that attracted me to this condition. And I've learned since then, I learned later, that there is a name for this condition in Italy, and it's called abusivismo. It's the abuse of the land. And it, I found that it wasn't limited just to unfinished building projects, that in fact, all over Italy, this was a matter of concern, especially in the south of Italy, where over centuries, one could see the manifestation of power and politics and historical greed corruption, but also fantasy and capriciousness and wonderful ambition. And it was all mixed together in a kind of lawless approach to building and construction and landscape. And you see it laid out in the landscape because while these projects may or may not be completed, they never go away. They just remain in the landscape. And so I began to develop an idea that would require a certain type of picture making, a kind of approach to this subject matter. So in the spring of 2000, I began to travel down to the south to an area that's called the Mezzogiorno. And in Italy, the Mezzogiorno is usually considered Naples and south through Sicily, and that's east to west, north to south from Naples down through Sicily. But in the minds and, and hearts of Italians, the Mezzogiorno really starts in Rome. It is everything south of Rome. But initially, and for several years, all I did was shoot Naples and south. Now, the word Mezzogiorno literally means half day. So what does that mean? Why would they call it that? Well, of course, when you get to the south of Italy, it's very hot. It is half day. It is noon. It is high sun. It is extremely hot. So that's part, I think, of the definition of mezzogiorno. It's an area where, as I say, people will begin projects and have a very capricious nature to see if they can express themselves through their condition, through their environment, through their building. And it's a fascinating area of the country. And it is a matter of great contention between the northern Italians and the southern Italians, that the northern Italians are industrious, they are economically sound. They are the bedrock and foundation of the economy of the country. And the Southerners are not. The Southerners have allowed their area to go to, to waste sometimes, uncompleted projects, undisciplined. However, this is true in many areas of the world, where as you get further south and nearer to the equator, I mean, basically, there are many, many months during the year you can't 
work on projects. So you do see projects taking an extremely long time to complete, years, where in a northern climate it might take months. Added to that, in the south of Italy, you have a chronic issue of corruption. The politics, the mafia, the various conquerors that have come through the south for 3,000 years have produced a kind of culture and a society where the locals essentially become resigned or have become resigned to an historical conquest of their land. And you can see in the South, literally, temples that the Greeks speculated on that were never finished. In Selanunte, in the south of, of Sicily, we see Temple G most of which is on its side. Now, it's true, an earthquake toppled most of it uh, several centuries after it was begun. But the truth of the matter is, it was never completed. And in fact, we see huge pillars. This is one of the largest Greek temples in ancient culture. And we still see the quarrying where they were still cutting the long columns for this temple. And while it looks like these are ruins on their sides, what you're really looking at is an uncompleted building project that still wasn't complete several centuries after it was begun. So we see this condition that has spanned thousands of years. So the people, the locals, literally have not had their own country since around 1000 BC. You have historically in this area the Greeks the Romans, the Saracens, uh, the Normans, uh, the Goths, the French, the Austrians, the Americans. Obviously, even Rome itself is not considered to be particularly indigenous as as a political power, but imposed from the north somehow. So this is the condition I found there. And what I began to see is that, and of course you understand, Italy is, Italians are masters at construction. They understand concrete in all its forms. The Romans invented concrete. And literally, they are the masters of concrete building projects. So in many ways, the things that I see or saw in this area are often concrete constructions. But it became much, much more. And... As a photographer, I, I think it's important to say that while I'm interested in the subject matter itself, it was the visual experience, the layering of information, the layering of materials, um, the evidence of centuries of cause and effect, of affect on certain uh, areas of the country, so that literally you see the drama played out in a particular landscape. And you can see the evidence of the various powers that have affected that particular slice of the land. And so from from an artistic standpoint, it is an incredible collage. It is an incredible um, mixture of, of information, an aggregate in all those manifestations you can imagine. And from a very personal to a very global kind of manifestation, you see these artifacts in the landscape. So, for seven years, I went back to the south of Italy to shoot large format color photographs. This is all done with uh, a 4x5 scenar on on 4x5 color negative materials, ultimately scanned and then made into digital files. But the 4x5 with film has a certain... Uh, capability of of image making that I am not able to make in a digital format, and therefore I stick to that uh, particular medium. So I did this over 12 trips, seven years. I would usually go uh, generally for a couple of weeks to a few months. I worked with assistants. I'm very fortunate that I've made some wonderful friendships in Italy over the years, and I've been assisted by many wonderful people, often people who were indigenous to those regions, but photographers themselves who had a sympathy with what it meant to do this project. And often they would be my 
my drivers, my translators, my uh, liaisons to the local populations. Um, usually if I went on a trip, I would find a, um, a central hub uh, and I would work out of that and move around that area until I felt I had done enough there. And then I'd move on and find another hub and work out of there for a few days or a few weeks. Um, so that tended to be the format um, of, my, of my work. Um, in the end, there were, there were hundreds and hundreds of, of photographs made. But I have edited it down to a 42-image project, um, which I feel covers the breadth of the ideas I was looking for uh, and has a kind of variety and poetry um, that has afforded me a, a very personally satisfying project. Mm -hmm.